Hello everyone, my name is Dan Bossy, president of Ag Resource Company in Chicago, Illinois. I'm joined with my good friend Noel Fryer from the Fryer Report from Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, Noel is visiting us this week, it's a delight to have him in town, and we thought we'd just talk a little bit about what's going on in the EU in terms of last year's weather on corn, and then of course talking about the EU export program for wheat and what it means to the world marketplace. No, last summer the EU had a very unusual type of growing season. Can you capsulize it for us and give us some ideas? Um, I guess the, there are two main points from last summer. One is that everybody got the EU wheat crop wrong. Um, everybody was on the low side. And uh, the corn crop, uh, people didn't get it right until the end of the season. We were going down all through the season. Um, we ended up being something like 15, 17 million tons below what we were the previous year. And that sparked the big discussion about what would be the size of EU imports, corn imports, compared to previous year when we imported about 9 million tons. With a 15 million ton shortfall in the crop, everybody was talking about 25 million tons, and that was going to be very important for the uh, world corn S&D. Absolutely. So, Noel, you had a big conference in Geneva talking about the dilemma of not having enough feed supply for the, the livestock person in the EU. After that was all distilled down, what did you learn? Well, the, 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 the driving force behind the conference was initially exactly that, that everybody thought there would not be enough uh, feeding stuff, particularly as the summer drought had um, decimated the uh, pasture and grassland. Um, so we went into that conference thinking, um, how are we going to solve the problem of not enough feed grains? And we came out of the conference asking ourselves, where are we going to put it all? Mm. Um, much of that was because the wheat crop went up so, so much between when we organized the conference and when the, the conference took place. And because of the different fr uh, price structures, the, um, the, there was a, a major move to wheat feeding. Um, and we came to the conclusion that compared to last year when we imported 9 million tons of corn, um, and against the USDA, who is currently using 16 million, the ceiling was thought to be about 11, 12 million tons. And that would not be a problem to find, even though the Ukraine crop uh, has uh, gone down considerably since we actually had the meeting. Okay, so you believe that the EU will take, as you just said, 11 or 12, roughly four or five million tons less than what the USDA is forecasting today? That's right, that's right. And I think that's one of the big problems with the... Um, the, uh, the, the world S&D is that the, U, the EU demand is being significantly uh, overstated. Having said that, we've gone down from the uh, USDA's original Ukraine crop of 27 million. <clears throat> there, there are private people now who, private estimates now are as low as 21. The, um, the uh, US ag attaché is, uh, is, I think, at uh, 21. The government is at uh, 22.9. Um, th this, this could be an issue, um, but on the other hand, it looks unlikely that Ukraine is going to send the, uh, the 3 million tons to China that they did last year. So th th there, is no, there is no real reason to be scared of a tight S&D or a problem. And certainly until now, the, 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 the premiums in Ukraine have not suggested that there is an issue either with the crop uh, problem or with um, a major import program into the un, into the EU. We are seeing nothing today which says we are going to go to the, the, the USDA 16 million tons. Well, this is disconcerting for the US farmer because uh, as he harvests his third largest crop on record, mm -hmm. we were hoping that someone else had a problem and would, of course, spark a little demand. Uh, it now looks like Brazil will export 30 to 32 million tons of corn. Our friends in Argentina are heading into an election. We will know a little more about their export policy forthcoming. But there's really no demand lever that we can pull on corn trade that would indicate a bullish price trend. I guess that's what you're suggesting. That, that's, that's the issue. I, I, there seems to be nothing on the demand side of the ledger today which suggests that it's the demand side that can do anything for the corn, uh, the corn price. Um, it can only come from a weather problem further down the road, um, and uh, that's, I think, today quite a long way down the road. Okay.
Final question on corn, and we'll then move to wheat a little bit here. But in terms of corn, what do you think the EU farmer will do next year in terms of corn acreage? Will it be steady, expanding, declining? What's your feelings? You know, we, we don't have we don't have the same um, <clears throat> range of possibilities in in the EU that you have in uh, in in the US. Um, acreage in the EU tends to be a function of um, rotation. Um, and habit rather than a reaction to price. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a discussion I was having at the uh, European uh, Commodities Bourse in Barcelona last week with, with some farmers, and they, uh, they, they all seem to have the same kind of uh, reply. We do what we've always done, and we just rotate. Okay. So the, it's unlikely that there will be any major uh, any major changes. So if we start out next year's EU corn crop and use an average trend line yield, you could see a number between 64 and 68 or somewhere in that range? Uh, if we were, what, 77 last year, we're going to be 61 maybe this year. I think, yeah, you could, you could uh, obviously, you could get close to 68, 68 70. Okay. Yeah, very good. My name is Dan Bossi, joined by Noel Fryer, The Fryer Report. Thanks again. We talked a little bit about EU corn. We'll be back with the story momentarily on, on wheat.